Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop is not the shop and welcome back to another Carve Co. Quickie. The response I've been getting from these quickies is pretty incredible. You all are coming up with topics for me to to go over <laughs> at a bigger rate than I thought you would. So thank you for all the input and if you have any suggestions, put them in the comments below or go to hinkleshop.com. Now as you can see, I've got a fancy new webcam here. I'm going to give this a shot. However, in the comments, if you find that this is too distracting having me in the corner, you let me know and we'll make adjustments. But let's move on here. Okay, so we have our shape here and we want to make step downs. We're going to make the Grand Canyon here, basically. The way we do this is starting in the center and I'm going to use 0.25 increments on this. It makes it easier. So click the center portion or the center vector. Go to your tool paths, go to area clearance. Our start depth will be zero, and our finish depth in this case will be 0.75. We'll enter those numbers. We're going to add a tool. Let's use an eighth inch end mill for all of this. Dropping down, we're going to switch from raster, which is back and forth, to an offset strategy. It'll just make this a much better clean cut. Scrolling down, save Z height of 0.1 is typically what I use. I don't do much more than that. I'm aware of my clamp positions and etc. And if you go much more than that, it will cause a lot of time in the carve. So 0.1 to 0.15 is typically what I use. I've already set the material thickness at one inch. We're going to click calculate now. And as you can see, it's generated the tool paths. Click off of the tool strategy menu. Click off of the vectors. Click on the next set. Open it back up again for another area clearance. Start depth zero. Finish dip depth. <laughs> finish depth. Finish depth in this case will be 0.5 because we're going to go down one quarter of an inch less than the center one. We're going to add the same tool, an eighth inch end mill. Select that. The rest of the settings are the same. Switch to offset. Calculate that strategy. That one is done. Click off of the vectors. Close out this menu. Click on the next set or the next ring. Open up the area toolpath once more, area clearance, I'm sorry. So we did three quarters of an inch, we did a half inch, let's do one quarter of an inch here. So finish depth would be 0.25. Same tool. Scrolling down, changing to offset. Calculating now. And because I messed up the math on this, when we do the next one, we'll click off of these guys once more. Click on the outer ring, area clearance, and let's call that 0.1 for a finish depth. Dropping down, adding the eighth inch tool, changing the strategy once more, calculating, good to go there. Now if you wanted to cut this loose, you could add tabs, you could use the uh, blue tape CA glue trick. You could cross your fingers and hope that it doesn't fly off the, the uh, CNC. But to cut this loose, you'll select the outside vector, close this out, do a profile tool path. Obviously, the, we've made this material one inch thick, so it needs to be a one inch deep cut. We're going to stick with the eighth inch end mill for this simulation. Not adding bridges. We're going to calculate now, close this out. And as you can see over here on the right, we have a whole bunch of toolpaths. But we can right click on the word toolpath right here and simulate all toolpaths at once. Clicking simulate. And as you can see, it's working its way from the center to the outside, pushing down on the center mouse wheel and rotating just a little bit. And you can see that we've created a circular Grand Canyon. So that's how you create steps. Useful for making chair seats, um, bowls. You can hog away at that and use maybe a cut saw grinder and get in there and work your magic and smooth that out to make a nice bowl. You could also use a bowl bit to do this. However, I hope that helped you out. I hope you learned something from this video. As always, please like and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. And we'll catch you on the next Carb Code Quickie.